Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to be working with the Ander 3 Pro. I get asked quite often my approach to leveling the bed, whether you're going to be using a CR touch or the regular uh, end stop for the Ender 3, you are always going to need to level the bed uh, to some degree. The probe is good at uh, dealing with uh, uneven beds, but the closer that you can get it to being spot on, the better your prints are going to come out because there's not a whole lot of deviation for the probe to overcome. So let's uh, start by putting together a couple of items into a tool that we can use to easily manually level the bed. So we're going to need a few things. So what I have here is uh, a couple of things that we're going to need to build this little tool. We're going to need about eight inches of wire. We're going to need a button battery and this is a little uh, three volt button battery. It's a model 2032. We're also going to need a feeler gauge. So this one is a 0.15 feeler gauge. We're also going to need an LED. We're going to need a medium size alligator clip. And finally, we're going to need a mini JST connector. So this is a two pin. You're going to need the, the female, the male, and then one of the JST connectors to use on the crimp tool. So now let's jump on to Onshape, design a housing for these pieces, and then we'll put it all together.
All right, so let's start by stripping back a little bit of this wire. And you don't need much because we're going to be putting a, a, a JST crimp on it. So just about uh, yeah, that's about right right there. So I would say about a uh, about a millimeter of wire. So if it's a little long like this one is, just cut it down. I'm just going to nip this down to about, about a millimeter of wire. And then we're also going to need a JST crimper. And we're going to be using the next to biggest size here. So how I like to load these little, these little connectors is using a, set of uh, tweezers because these things are really really small so what I do is I just put the little end of the tweezer into the uh, connector open up my tool and then slowly load the the part in there so on the on this end, you have to make sure that let's see if you guys can see this. So on this end you gotta make sure that the little uh that the little crimp is sticking out. Right, so there's a little there's a tiniest little gap. I mean, it's hard to see in the in the camera, but there you can see it there. See that little gap? So you gotta have that little bit of gap right there as the connector sticks through. Because if you don't have it, you'll crush the connector when you crimp down on it. All right, so now all I'm gonna do is put the, the wire inside. And there's the end of it there. Once it's in there, just squeeze down the crimper. And that's it. So now we got a nice crimp there. And we're going to put this aside for now. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our housing. So here's our, our little 3D printed parts. The one thing we're going to need to do is remove the remove the pins on the female side. So I already have one with the pins already off of it from a previous project. So this is what it looks like with no pins. If you look carefully here at our LED, it's got a wide blade and an arrow blade. So if you're looking right here at this little clear spot, there's a little gap in between the two. So the, the long blade on the bottom is the negative side the positive side is the short blade on the top okay and you can confirm that by taking your button battery and just touching the touching the two terminals one on each side okay so if it lights up this is how you want this is how this is how it's the polarity is set up all right i wanted to put this slide up here to give you a clear picture of what exactly we're trying to accomplish here the anode part of the LED is going to be connected to the alligator clip. Uh, once you put the wire on one side of the LED down through the hole in the 3D printed part that attaches to the alligator clip, it's going to fold uh, along that groove on the bottom and get sandwiched between the plastic part and the metal base of the alligator clip. And then the the other two uh, ends that fold over grip the plastic part. So the plastic part, along with those grips on the alligator clip, 
are going to press the one leg of the LED, the anode side, against the metal portion on the bottom of the alligator clip. The cathode side of the LED is going to go uh, into the JST connector. And uh, and then it just gets uh, cut. And then on the other side of the JST connector, we're going to place the small JST uh, crimp connector. The male side of the JST connector. And, uh, and then it's going to go from there to a piece of wire that then attaches to the top part or the negative side of the button battery. So the negative side is a side that doesn't have any markings on it indicated in this picture here so i just thought it would be important to put this slide up here to give clarity to how the thing needs to be wired so that it will work take our little connector side and we're going to install it in the connector so here's the crimp the crimp side and then here's the little male connector and this thing has one side has like a little pin on it see the little pin there to get this thing to focus so there's a little pin and then this has a uh, uh, some openings on the bottom so the pin goes towards the openings so we gotta twist it around to make sure we get it in one of the openings and then once you push it in it locks in and now that thing is good to go so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the short leg And we're gonna we're gonna push it into one of these uh, one of these sides. So what I recommend is to take the the little piece that we already crimped the wire to, and uh, and then make sure that we know which side we got to put the leg on. So we got to put the leg on this side of this connector. So we're taking the short leg and putting it on this side of the connector. You're going to push it through until you're touching about the uh, the the peg. So there's kind of like a little a little thicker spot on the LED leg. So right as soon as it hits that thicker spot, that's that's where you want to stop. Okay, and then we're gonna we're gonna bend the LED up. So we're gonna turn the connector over. So you got the side without the openings facing up, and then we're going to bend this LED carefully to not break the uh, the connector off of the the the, the uh, bulb, and bend it bend it up, okay, like this. And then now the other side. Our model has a hole in it. See that hole? So we're going to push the other side of the leg down into that hole. And at the same time, we're going to we're going to try to work this this connector into the enclosure. So now we got the the leg in the enclosure. We got the leg inside of the uh, connector, and the LED is on top. We're just gonna work it to the side a little bit. And that pretty much that pretty much has it right there. Okay. Push it down a little bit. And now our LED is in is in its housing. Now we're gonna take the leg and we're gonna bend it up. So that the leg falls into the groove of this uh, part that we 3D printed. So right now the leg is in the groove, just like that. Okay. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut off. We're going to cut off this. Uh, most of this this end here maybe leave 
about a millimeter sticking out. I'm just using the blue cutters that came with the printer. Snip that off. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to take our alligator clip. We're going to take it out of its sleeve. And we're going to place the wire side, the LED side, onto the metal part of the alligator clip. And then we're going to carefully crimp down around this piece of plastic. So you got something that looks like that. And then we're going to straighten out this, this part here. Make sure that's in there. Center your LED. And then we're going to need to cut the extra extra wire that's coming out of here. So it's not going to be totally flush. So you just want to get in just a little bit. So that the wire's inside just a little bit, just like that. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, so you see that? It's in just the slightest little bit, maybe about a millimeter inside from being flush. And then it's good if you're going to uh, put some super glue on here. That's, I would recommend putting some super glue on this connection uh, to make sure that it doesn't move out of here. But uh, when you put the cover on, the cover is, gonna, the cover is also going to hold it. So you can super glue it after. So now take your cover and line it up over your LED. And this is a, uh, it was designed to press fit together. So just carefully squeeze it down. There, that's got it right there. Okay. Oh, I'm missing a screw. There you go. All right. So now it's down all the way. All right. So put your super glue uh, right around this edge, or do it before you press it together, and uh, let it dry. All right, guys. So I thought it'd be a little bit more professional to uh, make a part instead of relying on a piece of tape to hold these, uh, the feeler gauge and the battery together. So what I did is, uh, these are the parts that just came off the printer that we designed in uh, on shape. And it has a little hole here for the wire to go in and a couple little grooves. So let's, let's put this thing together and I'll show you how it works. So you take your feeler gauge and uh, slide it into the, uh, the holder. And the holder has a couple of, has kind of like a slot in it. To, for the feeler gauge to slide into so it won't, won't pull out of there once it's in. Next thing you want to do is take the wire and poke it through the little hole in the back. And you may need a piece of uh, like a tweezers or something to pull this out of here. Once you get it up and out, go ahead and tie a knot in it. Just like that. And then what we want to do next is we want to strip the insulation off of the wire. And uh, you want to strip it as close to the, the, the knot as possible. So I'm just going to try to get as close as I can. And when you when you pull on it, you're going you're gonna to tighten the knot. But that's okay. Just uh, adjust until you get the insulation off. Once you got the insulation off, go ahead and twist the end of the wire. And what you want to do now is you want to curl this wire a couple of times, like make a couple of little coils with it. Just like that. 
and then we're going to get our cover. We're going to put the wire in the cover. So it's going to go, it's going to cover it like this. So the wire has to go just like this with the knot on the outside of this, this uh, groove that's cut in it. I don't know if you can see that there. And then take your battery, get those little coils more or less in the middle, and take your battery and put it with the uh, negative side down on the wire. So what you're going to see is you're going to see the auto number of the battery uh, along with the voltage. And then you're going to take the whole thing and flip it over. Or actually, we can probably just turn the key over. But just pull the wire um, towards the battery. Slowly getting it to go into its little... Uh, holder and once you got it in this position go ahead and turn it around pull the knot out a little bit make sure the knot is sitting in that groove and once you got it lined up go ahead and start pushing the the two parts together and I, I designed them to snap together so you don't need any fasteners or anything and then just keep pressing it till it's all the way flat. And that's it. If you need to open it, there's a little slot. See a little slot there? I could just take a screwdriver in there and twist it to, to unlock it. And to test it, just take your alligator clip and touch the the feeler gauge so this is ready to go all right guys so i'll put all these stl files uh, free for download that way if you guys want them you can uh, use this little tool it's pretty cool because uh, unlike a uh, push switch which elevates the um the the nozzle to to activate this sits right on the build plate so this is on the build plate as soon as the nozzle touches this it's gonna it's gonna light up the LED. Okay. So now just take your uh your connector and push it into your uh your little female end until it snaps in. And now we're good to go. So now we got both both our sides, and if we touch the two together, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna test our tool. So one thing that I did uh, beforehand is I wrote down the coordinates of where the wheels were. So this is the screw right above the wheel. Uh, so left front is, uh, this is like a top-down view. Left front is X29, Y32. So we're going to go to that coordinate first. We're going to start by homing the printer. And then I'm going to go to that coordinate. So I'm going to go to move. I'm going to set X to 29. Actually, before I do that, let me move the Z up a little bit. Yeah, so since we don't know where, where uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, since we don't know where Z is going to be, let's move the Z up a little bit just for safety. So I'm going to move it up to about 5 millimeters. And then uh, we're going to move. Uh, let's do the Y first so we get away from that clip. So Y is going to be 32. And then X is going to be 29. That, that's putting that print nozzle right over that left front screw. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to move our, our Z down to zero. 
And then we're going to take our tool that we made. And what I did is I lengthened the wire a little bit more. So initially I said you needed about uh, 8 inches of wire. This is about 15 inches of wire. So just double the wire that I said at the beginning. You're going to you're going to clip uh you're going to clip one to the uh to the screw. So we got this screw here. And you're going to take your uh feeler gauge, put it under your nozzle. And then you're going to adjust your wheel until this this thing barely lights up. You see how it's barely lighting up? So if if uh if you want to go if you want to bring the bed down, you got to tighten it. So turn it to the right. You see how now it's not lighting up the LED anymore? Or barely. So I'm going to back it a little bit until it just barely lights the LED. Just like that, okay? So that, that's that coordinate done. Now let's move over to the right front. So my coordinates for right front is X199. So we're going to leave the Y where it is, and we're just going to change X to 199. And uh, this is already adjusted. So I know that it's not gonna it's not gonna hit the build plate or anything, but let's say let's say you're doing this for the first time. What you want to do is you want to raise your Z a little bit. So just raise your Z maybe five millimeters to be safe. And then go ahead and move your X. So I'm gonna go to 199. My printhead is going to move right over that right front uh, wheel screw. Now I'm going to move the Z down to zero. And then I'm going to get my feeler gauge again, and I'm going to test it. So I'm a little bit, uh, a little bit high, so I'm going to, oh, actually, I'm, yeah, I'm a little bit high. So I'm going to turn the wheel to the, to the left. Till it just barely touches. Right there. Right there is perfect. It is barely, just barely making contact. Okay, so that's good. Raise my Z again to 5. And I'm going to go to the right rear, which is 199 and 203. So X199, Y203. I'm going to move my Z back down to zero. Take my feeler gauge. See, it has barely. Actually, I think I can bring it down a little bit. So I'm going to. Move the wheel to the left slightly. That's it right there. All right, so now I want to move my Z back up to five. And then now I'm going to move to the left rear. So that's X 29. And Y203. I'm going to move my Z back down to zero. And I'm going to check with my feeler gauge.
That's just that's what you want right there. Just barely touching. Barely making contact. All right. So now I'm going to check my uh, my center. You always want to check your center if you're not running an ABL because most of your printing is going to happen in the center. So I'm going to move my Z up five millimeters. And now I'm going to move my Y to 115. So I'm currently running Gyres uh, firmware. And Gyres uh, extends the uh, build surface slightly. The stock is 220 by 220. When you're running Gyres, it's 230 by 230. So the center for me would be 115. So I'm going to set my dial to 115. So that's 115 on the Y, and now I'm going to move my X to 115. And now I'm going to bring my Z down to 0. And it looks like I'm looks like I'm really close. Okay. So you see that? So right now the, the nozzle in the center is too low. So I can barely get the feeler gauge under there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the corners and I'm gonna raise it to where it does not make contact with the LED. And then I'm gonna check the center again. So let's move back to our first coordinate, 29 by 32. Now if you're running an auto bed level, uh, you know, then you can you can compensate pretty easily because you can create a mesh and then the mesh will be loaded right before you start your print and the Z will move up and down with the contour of the bed to maintain that distance between the nozzle and the bed. Uh, but in this case, since we don't have an ABL, we're going to have to make some adjustments here. So we're going to go 29. And then uh, Y is going to be 32. And right now we're making contact, so we're going to... Turn the dial to the right to tighten it. And we're going to tighten it until there's uh, the light is, does not turn on. Okay, so there's making contact. So that's barely making contact. I'm going to move it to the right one uh, eighth of a turn. So right now I got a gap above the uh, feeler gauge where I can see I can see some uh, some light through the through the between the nozzle and the feeler gauge. So I'm going to try it there. So let's go over to the next coordinate. 199 by 32. And again, I'm going to put my feeler gauge down in there, and I'm making contact, so I'm going to raise it until I can see some light under the feeler gauge. Right there, okay. I'm going to go to my next coordinate, 199 by 203. And right now we're making contact. So 
I'm gonna tighten it to the right until I see some light between the uh, print nozzle and the feeler gauge right there. I'm gonna go to the left rear. I'm changing it 29X and 203Y. Check it. Lighting up. So again, I'm going to turn the wheel to the right until I see a gap under the feeler gauge. Okay, got a gap there. All right, now I'm going to go back to the middle. X115 and then Y115. I'm going to check with my feeler gauge. And that's that's perfect. Okay, so now I got barely, barely I barely have any contact with the uh, feeler gauge in the middle, so that's that's going to be good. So if the majority of your prints are going to be done in the middle, uh, you're going to be fine. If you tend to print large objects and you're going off to the edges, then uh, I recommend that you consider getting an ABL to compensate for any irregularities in your build plate. All right, guys. So let's load up some filament and we'll. Uh, We'll run off a, a test print. So I got my test file already here on the SD card. I'm just going to print a square in the center of the bed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to raise my, my Z. I'll raise it 10 millimeters. And then I'm going to go ahead and start my... Uh, my print. Oh, I gotta load the filament first. Alright, so let's load some filament. I'm gonna warm up my hot end to Alright, I got my filament loaded up. I'm going to go ahead and lower my temperature to 150. I'm going to start my uh, my print. And uh, I'm currently running a start G code from my two Clipper Ender 3v2s. 
Uh, and those have uh, those have some bed meshes that that need to be loaded. So I'm not sure if the GECO is going to work with this, but I believe it will because they don't they don't auto bed probe or anything. So I'm thinking that it should it should work. But anyway, you guys will like this uh, start G code. All right, guys. So this is the first print that this printer is going to uh, do since I put it together. So the next upgrades that I'm going to be doing to it is going to be a 4.2.7 motherboard CR Touch along with a Raspberry Pi and uh, we're going to load Clipper on it. That way it can take advantage of pressure advance and input shaping. I just noticed something too. I didn't uh, change the E steps. So hopefully, hopefully it'll it'll print properly. Oh, yeah, it looks good. All right, let's check the print. And guys, if you guys aren't printing on Garolite, you guys are missing out, man. There you go. Awesome. All right, guys, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Turn on your notification bell and leave me some comments. I love reading the comments. I do my best to get back to you guys as soon as possible. Stay tuned. Uh, there's going to be more videos on this Ender 3 Pro as I uh, upgrade it. It's more uh, Ender 3 V2-ish like right now. Uh, I had a, a spare screen from my Ender 3v2 that I recently converted to Clipper. So that's what I installed here. And it's really easy. All you got to do is if you got a Ender 3 Pro or just standard Ender 3 and it's got a 4.2.2 board on it, regardless of whether it's the silent stepper board or the one that makes all kinds of racket like this one, uh, you can use the Ender 3v2 screen with it. You just have to flash uh, a different uh, firmware, something like Gyres or uh, Miguel's professional software, uh, either either one of those. And then you also have to make sure that you uh, flash the screen with the appropriate firmware. So if it's a Gyres firmware, you got to flash the screen with Gyres. If it's Miguel's professional firmware, you got to flash the screen with his. That way all the icons will work with the software that's on the motherboard. All right, guys. Till the next video, take care.